and call the meeting to order, given that there is presently a quorum. So welcome to the uh, July 17 regular meeting, Northampton mm -hmm. Housing Authority. And as usual, we'll open this meeting with resident comments. I'm, try I'm seeing uh, Director Lieber trying to say something. Is there? Yeah, I'm just, I'm also looking for um, Commissioner Cancel. I don't see him. Um, I messaged uh, Marilyn and I will now message Edgar. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Can you. Thank you. Well, that being said, we still have a quorum and it's the floor would be open then for resident comments. So as is usual, I'll ask Jack if you have a um, I'm Madam sorry, Chair, um, Ma Madam Chair, I need, to, I need to call the roll. Call the roll. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Present. Thank you. Uh, Jack, could you please mute MM, Mary, Edwin, mute everyone that is not to be speaking right now. I can hear too much feedback. Um, Commissioner Brooks? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? I am here. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Here. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel? Oh, he's in the waiting room. Let me admit him. Thank you. Uh, and I'm just waiting a moment, Madam Chair, as he's connecting to audio. Um, Commissioner Cancel, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. We're calling the roll. And so, uh, Commissioner Cancel? Yes, here. Thank you. Thank you. And is commis has Commissioner Richards joined us yet? <clears throat> no. Okay, then. Um... I'm hoping that we'll hear soon from Commissioner Richards, but we can proceed with resident comment. And Jack, if you have a, a role there, a list, then I'll let you go ahead and call those, please. Absolutely. So um, I'm going to go down the list, calling on folks in the order that is on my screen. You have the ability, if you're logged in on a phone or a computer, to unmute yourself when called upon. Please just make sure that you state your name and what property you're calling from. And then I will do anyone who called in from a phone last, and I will tell you your last four digits of your phone number and invite you to speak. So the first individual I have on my screen is identified as MM. Um, if you would like to speak, you are unmuted. If you are not a resident, please let us know that. MM has been muted. Uh, the next individual who has the ability to unmute themselves is Angela Santanello. Thank you, Jack. Um, I just wanted to talk to the chairman of the board. Um, last NHA board meeting, it was mentioned that tenants were always coming to these meetings and being very complimentary of NHA and being paid to do it. Um, that is the farthest thing from the truth. I wanna set the record straight. Uh, I am a person that can see the full pictures. I'm not a narrow focused as most of the residents that bring issues to these meetings are. I personally will call the office with maintenance requests as needed, but I, I put serious concerns in writing to NHA to address serious specific lease violations observed. A lease is what we all agreed to and signed when we moved into this building. NHA has procedures for reporting maintenance requests and they also have tenant concern requests as long as you follow the procedures, NHA is extremely easy to work with. You, there is a hierarchy that you have to go through, through the property manager, through the assistant property manager, uh, and then through the executive director, or the, I'm sorry, the senior property manager and then the executive director. What I've found while running the neighborhood watch within the Salvo building is that tenants tend to complain the most are the ones that refuse to put any of their, their concerns in writing. It appears that tenants are concerned or are constant complainers do not understand that in order to show how NHA employees are being utilized and allow for budget compliance that putting work orders and following up on them are, are 
not if they're not completed in a timely manner is actually a tenant's responsibility. Mm -hmm. If a tenant has a problem with the guidelines set forth by, by NHA, as there is a resident service coordinator available to help them. But that does not mean that the tenant still doesn't need to put their concerns in writing. NHA also must follow the fair housing and ADA laws. So when someone from NHA tells a tenant that they need to get a doctor's note for something, it's because they can't just change something for one and not for all. Yet, if the doctor requires it for a tenant, then they have documentation to back up what they're doing under ADA compliance. Last but not least, there was a point in the previous NHA board meeting that one of the commissioners was very vocal and downright rude to the chairman of the board. This should not be acceptable. That commissioner also accused the chair of microaggressions against another commissioner and the sheer disrespect of that commissioner in these meetings is appalling. She also raised her voice to the chair and was not professional at all, and it appeared to be reverse discrimination and or reverse microaggression. My personal opinion is that everyone should be muted during these meetings and only allowed to speak if the chair recognizes them. These board meetings are out of control because of one board member or another that seem to have chips on their shoulders. Why wouldn't the mayor do a thorough vetting process of board members and make sure that anyone appointed to the board is in good standing and has a history of being in good standing, also not involved with any type of, court, of housing court proceedings? By the mayor completing a better vetting process, the board should be filled with more qualified candidates. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. The next person who Thank has you. the ability to unmute themselves is Candace Franchere. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm. I have never done this online. I used to go to the board meetings years ago when I lived here years ago at McDonald House. So bear with me here. I'm not computer savvy. Um, I was first off. I wanted to tell you that I realized that you're switch management. But I think that there needs to be some credit due to Amanda that was working here in Florence Heights. Um, I lived here years ago in 1998. I moved out. We got a house, everything else. I ended up back here. Uh, when we had a house fire, we lost everything. So we're right back to scratch. <laughs> so I'm back here. Now it's been years, but Amanda came in and she has everybody on track. She has a good rotation going with people in, out. She developed a good system. You know, we can always get along on different things, obviously. But as a worker, she's the best thing we've had come through here since John Height was in office. We have been through so many managers and it seems like the rules change every two weeks. It's crazy. There is no set. I'd love to get my hands on a stack of the policies, a whole bit of the policy, because there's so many changes that keep happening, and the tenants are unaware of what the policies are. So there's no notifications of when the changes occur, what the original policy was. But we used to have an advocate here years ago that could intermediate between housing and the board and the tenants, and we can put it all together and have our own meetings to discuss what housing was doing, what the policies were, if there were any questions. Here for a second and then it went away. I'm sorry? No, that's okay, Candace, you can continue. There are some people who keep unmuting themselves and we just we mute them until it's their turn. So keep going, sorry for the interruption. Okay. okay, I'm not sure if this makes any sense to you, but I've seen the old NHA from back in the late 90s so I have a comparison factor. And then I moved out, had my life, blah, 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 had a house fire, came back. And when I came back, I saw chaos. We got, what, three, four managers within a year and a half? It was insane. But then you brought on Amanda, and she did incredibly well. And now that she has a system in place that we're all accustomed to, we all understand what's expected, what's going to happen if you don't. She had the law laid down, as it were. And then she was uprooted and moved away, and it's caused a lot of questions here. With a, you know, we've had I've had the whole discussion sitting at my table. <laughs> what's going on? Can anyone tell me what's going on? 
you know, we don't respond to questions here at this portion of the meeting for somebody who okay. that, but just for open meeting law purposes. But okay, does what I say make sense to everybody of what we're seeing? I, I was really impressed with her. That's hard to do. But I was really impressed with her because she was right down the line. She followed policy to the letter. And that's how I like it. It's, it's set in stone. But I think that there needs to be another advocate appointed. We had one years ago. We had the RAB and every, we had a, an advocate between housing, the tenants, that could bring the concerns. And I think that needs to happen again. Thank you, Karen. That, that's you, have, you have 10 more seconds, Mary. Do you want to wrap up? Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to throw out there right now. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So just a reminder, everyone, if you will be, re you will remain muted unless you're called upon. There are a few people who keep unmuting themselves. Uh, we are going down the list and everyone will have an opportunity to speak. The, the next individual on my list has the ability to unmute themselves. They're identified as David M. You can unmute yourself. Just let us know if you're a resident or a member of the public. Give them 10 more seconds to unmute themselves. If not, we're going to go on to the next person. Um, the next person is identified as G. Nabad. Uh, yes, hello. My name is Gwen Nabod and I live in Northampton. Um, and I'd rather not state my location, but um, I have some concerns um, in the face of all of the flooding and the recent weather that we've had. And according to the National Institute of Health in a study called Structural Brain Abnormalities in Patients with Inflammatory Illness Acquired Following Exposure to Water Damaged Buildings, a volumetric MRI study, frontal cortical region of the brain is impacted by mold exposure, resulting in structural brain abnormalities causing executive cognitive and neurologic issues. These symptoms include brain fog, short-term memory issues and concentration, depression, anxiety, mood swings, disorientation, skin irritations, trouble breathing, excessive thirst, numbness and tingling, morning stiffness, nausea, fatigue, tremors, blurred vision, coughing, headaches, and muscle cramping, just to name a few. Also known as chronic inflammatory response syndrome, it causes permanent damage to the central nervous system. Mold is also considered an endocrine disruptor and the thyroid gland is susceptible to endocrine disrupting substances that are toxic to the endocrine system, including certain types of mold. Mold has been shown to have an impact on learning for adults and children, resulting in increased expenditures for local communities and state health programs for special education and or for misdiagnosed long-term and chronic illnesses. It can impact work and school attendance, resulting in learning loss and financial losses. Exposure to mold can cause a newborn infant's lungs to bleed. Exposure to mold can cause birth defects affecting brain development and lung development. OSHA states that common sources of mold can include plumbing, roof and window leaks, flooding, poorly maintained drain pans and wet foundations due to landscaping or lack thereof, and gutters that direct water into or under buildings, water vapor from unvented or poorly vented kitchens, showers, combustion appliances, all create conditions that promote mold growth. 25% of the population is genetically susceptible to mold and widespread inflammation throughout the body leads to chronic illness. I suggest that NHA, the state, and the Department of Public Health should give out dehumidifiers and air, purif air purifiers and pay part of the utilities for residents who pay their own utilities while these conditions continue to fail to be addressed. Lack of maintenance on public housing infrastructure is a serious problem that must be resolved, but mitigation can help. NHA, the City of Northampton, Department of Public Health, and OSHA need to investigate mold exposure by testing workers, children, and elders who live and work in moldy conditions. The City of Boston has done this by partnering with the Harvard T. Chan School of Public Health. Increased spending post-COVID for improved ventilation in all buildings overseen by NHA with ARPA funding could have helped with this, but that process has been opaque and I hope to hear about what NHA is doing with the ARPA funding and with the mold and the chronic dampness conditions. 
The City of Northampton Health Department, Meredith O'Leary and volunteer members must create a partnership between mental health and primary care providers, city councilors, state legislators, and the new Executive Office of Housing so that people are properly diagnosed and conditions can be addressed for the health of the public. Public housing residents are members of the public voting, voting citizens. Thank you. Oh, was that it? Okay. Um, the the next individual who can unmute themselves is Anna Gilbert. Please let us know if you are attending. Kara, you're muted. I'm, muted. I'm just listening. Thank you. I need to address that um, uh, at 544, Commissioner Richards joined us. And if she could just unmute and say that she's present. She has her hand raised. Uh, trying to get in, but I'm here on the phone. Thank you very much. I would like to speak. My name is Edwin. Can I speak? Edwin, I'm going to call on you when you're at, when it comes to your turn. Okay. Um, okay. That, I, I will wait. Thank you. You're welcome. The, the next individual who has the ability to unmute themselves is named iPad. Can you let us know if you're a resident or not? Okay, um, and then there are two Judy's present, one that's just labeled Judy and one that's Judy Ron Polly. Are either of you residents looking to speak this evening? Okay, I am going to move on to Casey. Can you just let us know your name and if you're a resident or not? Yes, I'm a resident at McDonald. I've been here for four years and 17 days. Wanted to give a positive shout out to Danielle, our resident services coordinator who treats residents in an inclusive, equitable, and respectful manner. And I'd like to encourage NHA to provide trainings for its employees in inclusion tactics for dealing with this particular population. I think it's fair to say that most tenants living on these properties are dealing with trauma and other crippling life issues, yet the administration sees particularly weak in these skills. I'm not trying to shame y'all, but it says loads about who you're employing. It's a new world. People are being held accountable for their actions. And the pandemic has left many of us more vulnerable than ever. Add the recent flooding, the poor quality water that we're having to drink that's tainted with lead because of the pipes. We've kind of got an epidemic within the pandemic. And I trust NHA has taken steps to inform all of its tenants of these facts and to encourage them not to drink their, drink, their tap water. Um, are y'all providing water for us? Clean water, perhaps? water filters, anything. I want to know what's going on to protect us from the lead tainted water. Um, and we're in Northampton and Northampton prides itself on its innovative and groundbreaking works and actions. NHA is in a great position to do the same. I'm not enjoying the deflection tactics instead of dealing head on with issues and how to resolve them. Leading with threats and punitive actions is getting really old. It doesn't remedy anything. Um, it's, it's just very frustrating. My grievances don't reach the grievance committee as they are halted as being too hard to understand or the authority has questions. That's unfortunate as I've written these on a level most can understand, a fifth grade level to be exact, because as an educator, I'm well aware of different learning styles and abilities. This is pretty important. I would appreciate the authority doing the same and respect for its tenants. Any board member who would like to see my grievance list, please be in touch. I'm all about transparency as well as solving issues once they are identified. Has the authority considered listening sessions or reaching out to residents on their views and how to remedy problematic situations? I have analogies for this, but I'm not gonna waste your time with that. It's come to my attention again that Hampshire Heights is flooded basements, leaving standing water and mud turns into more mold and it's, it's just not good. It hurts humans and other animals. And in addition, NHA may wanna consider a yes and strategy instead of a yes, but 
operating modality. Y'all come on, you know more. I know you do. The key issues were made burdensome and the way our beautiful gardens working with Grow Food Northampton have been appropriate to reflect, reflect the aesthetic of the authority is equally worrisome. Captain, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, all right, good. We do have the right to self-expression. And for many of us, the gardens are what we have to do that. Please work with us instead of against us. I'd like to welcome Jose to McDonald as our new property manager. I'm hoping he'll take the time to introduce himself to us in a welcoming manner. Thank you. The next person who has the ability to unmute themselves is Edwin Velez. Okay, uh, if Mr. Velez, you were on a second ago. Uh, you are on my list now. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, it seems like more people that, that what I thought are aware of all the, 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 the situations that housing has and the incapacity of housing people to deal with it. And I am glad that they know about it. Um, a year ago, I asked Jose Cruz, Jose Cruz, you know, I mean, does housing know that the building is full of mold? His answer was, maybe we know, maybe we don't. I said, oh, you don't know if this mold is toxic or not? His answer was, maybe we know, maybe we don't. So, because I have I, all the licenses, I, 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 no. I, 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 uh, am I there still? Hello? Yes, Mr. Hello. Velez, you're still good. Hello? You're still good, Mr. Velez, keep going. Okay, because I have all the licenses about mold, lead, and all kind of toxic in any building, because I work for the Department of Health in Hartford, I went ahead after Mr. Cruz's stupid answers and I did a test and it came out with four toxic, okay? Four toxic. I went to Cara, I went to, to everybody. By the way, Cara and Jose cornered me in a meeting um, and they wanted me, to, I mean, they were like, this is illegal. You cannot tell the people anything, blah, 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 blah. Because when I got the results, I did 190 copies with an explanation letter and brought it and put it in everybody's door. And when the administration knew that, they went and picked up most of them, which is incredible, incredible. But anyhow, the point is, that eventually, after 10 months of harassment from housing, Jose Cruz and the maintenance people, because this is another point, maintenance people are, you know, like, like for instance, there is a guy here, Gary. I used to talk to him like, like, like friends. And just of the sudden, one day I said good morning to him. Good morning, Gary. He passed by me like if I was a piece of shit, okay? This is incredible. How come they do that? That's, by the way, the, the union book says that everybody who works for housing has to be a, a cautious. Has, if you say hi, they, should, they have to say hi. We pay their, their salary, okay? I don't understand how can they do that. Jonathan, Jonathan invited me to fight, and I called the police. And I Mr. Velez, you have 30 seconds left. Okay, I am going to go on to the next person. Um, the next person is identified as S.G. Scott. Uh, S.G. Scott, you have the ability to unmute yourself. Okay, and then the next person is a smile face with the word tenant. I think Mr. Scott is trying to oh, unmute wow. me. So we're here in the Salvo community room and a few people on stage. Somebody want to go before me? Oh, go ahead. 
Well, well, okay, so if I'm going to speak, I'd like to talk about the roof leaking, right? That's a major problem. I have serious leaks in my place. The capital plan is to get that roof fixed, but it, like it's a, it's a, the, the first thing we have to do because my bathroom's got mold in it through and all that. But the, uh, where am I? Okay, I'm over here. But this roof, and after that, after that, um, Mr. Scott, can you come a little closer to your phone because you're breaking up? Let me see. Uh, it looks like we may have lost him complete. Um, the next person is just identified as tenant. Would you like to speak? You have a smiley face in front of your name. Um, okay. And then I'm going to go. Allow people to speak because there are going to be technical difficulties here because we're all. Yeah, I will. I will revisit. Um, I have a question. I have a question. Um, so the la the next person is named Alfred Chagnum. You have the ability to unmute yourself. Um, okay, I don't see him responding. The next person ends. Well, in yeah, did you answer it? Uh, just let us know where you're calling in and if you're a, you're a tenant, Mr. Chagnon. Uh, this is Alfred Chagnon. I'm a resident of Walter Savo House. And you have three minutes for your comment. Okay. I'd like to talk about the health. The lack of ventilation. Oh, excuse me. Hold on a minute. I can't get in a private, quiet place because there's too much going on around here, but it's you could get back in a minute. I appreciate it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, Joella, do you have your hand raised as a? You'd like to put your tenant hat on? Yeah, yeah. But I'd like to be last. They may bring up some issues that I I, I would cover, and then I wouldn't have to say anything. Okay. Um, so, person ending in twelve nine nine, you have the ability to unmute yourself, as well as phone number ending five five zero, and phone number ending three four zero seven. Um, you, you all are up if you're available. If not, we are going to swing back to Mr. Chagman if he's found a place. Mr. Chagman, have you, oh, you have to unmute yourself again, Mr. Chagman. Uh, Joella, it looks like you're up. Looks like I'm up. Okay. Um, firstly, well, I, I wanted to say something positive about our last meeting. Do you want me to wait till I'm on the, uh, wearing my head as the uh, commissioner uh, with that? Because I do have some other things I'd like to talk about. This is um, this is the tenant portion. So right, if you right, like okay. to comment as a tenant, and if you would please kindly save your uh, board comments to the board. Uh, I just asked that it could have been like yeah, yes. Yeah, I, and okay. I'm answering you. Oh, I just you. I just wonder. My question is, I I want folks to know. I think y'all kind of realize it. I grew up in Texas, and I'm used to on uh, thirty a hundred degree uh, days, a uh, hundred degree degrees. 30 days or more. I'm used to seeing people pass out from heat stroke. But I think this last past week was probably one of the hottest times that I've ever experienced. And I think it was uh, quite frankly, hotter than Hades. Um, and what I remember on another, I uh, went to the food pantry to get food. It's a line and there's exhaust and cars to get there. It takes about an hour. While I'm standing in line, I brought my own frozen water. ED came out and gave everyone in the passengers cold water. I mean, as a good, I, I had one, she said, you know, you can take this anyway. So I'm just wondering, what does it take for our administration to treat our people, our clients, our tenants, our residents with that respect and care? It was the hottest time last week ever recorded on the planet. So I don't know why people wouldn't think, oh gosh, we've got tenants with respiratory issues, health issues, whatever, to see how they're doing. Many of them, I have, an, I have a fan right here and, and Jack and Danielle can attest to that. It's cool right here. But in my living room, I have two towel fans, a ceiling fan, an Arctic, arc, Arctic air and another one, and I'm still sweating. 
So I worry because I know a tenant who passed away. Um, he didn't have his air conditioning on that one of those hot weekends. And I'm just wondering what proactive measures people can do to prevent this. I mean, you know, you have the governor saying it's cold, snowy, stay inside. But what about the heat? Times have changed. The heat here is just as hot as in Texas, if not more. And what do we have for them? And especially since administration, Jack was here, was known that in the TV room, the cooling stations, TV room and cafeteria, that air conditioning system wasn't working. So almost four or five days, people were suffering. And the thing is, I think housing tried to help by putting two box fans and it was just blowing hot air. We don't have a vent open. If you were in Texas, because they can't control the climate, they would put ceiling fans all over, like in the front area uh, where the buses come and in every hallway to treat people as the bylaws would say, humanely, with decency and respect. I don't understand how anyone could let tenants, and I'm just being in a one building. I don't know what it's like. And I'm, I'm just, you know, I heard all about the flooding and all that kind of stuff. It's devastated, you know, I work with Brooke, Brooke Foods in Northampton. My prayers go out to them. But it's been a real rough week. And I know people have been over in East Hampton, fine. But what about here? This is what people are like, what's going on here? And I just also want to say, I think that it's interesting. How many seconds I got? It's just interesting when, uh, when a non-person of color tells a person who's trying to, because in my life, you know, I this is professional, personal, and political that I know about that. I did my master's degree at Dartmouth College in theater and the politics of race. I was in a PhD program at UMass, social justice education. So I think I know, I'm always learning though, you see me always in classes, what microaggression is, implicit bias, and racism. And if I have to say that, it's different because somebody else said that, saw me and said, wow, you never say that. It must be really true how you felt. It is. No one but myself, and of course, probably the other person of color goes through this. People who are not in that group, it's not important because we've not yet had one diversity, equity, inclusion class or implicit bias for the board members. Well, I think I mean, one time you did it for staff. Members. So don't pit ten tenants against tenants. It's a bad look. Thank you. Okay. Um, and now I do not see SG Scott back. And so I have gone through the list and all tenants have had the opportunity to speak at this time. Hello, uh, did it help? Oh, sorry, Mr. Chagman, you're right. You're, you're, you're up. Okay, um, I'd like to speak a couple minutes because uh, Mr. You're Chagman, we can't, we can't hear you. Um, and I noticed that you are in fact, uh, unmuted, but we still cannot hear you. Are you there? Because I'm on my own phone. And they were all in the community room with Shannon, and he got disconnected. It won't let him back on. Mr. Mr. Chagman, you're free to speak. You have three minutes. I, I thought I was speaking a minute ago. Yeah, you yeah, are. Please, please, go. We can hear we can hear you now, Mr. Chagnon. Please, please feel free to speak. Okay. Will these people in the community room have a chance to speak off of my phone because they can't get it back on a TV anymore? Because there's people in the community room here that would like to speak. I see a bunch of people here. They came and got me because I was at Alice's house and I like to speak, um, but I. Did come back down want, to the if, community room. Uh, uh, Mr. Chagnon, if you would like to pass your phone around from okay. one person to the next, we're here okay. for the duration for resident comments. Okay, well, I want to start off first because uh, Friday here at the Walter Savo House in the front of the building, the entranceway, we had live species all over the ground. Species? I don't know if it was dog or human, but to come to find out later, it was human, okay? Friday night, I went to bring trash up to the second floor and there was a trail of feces from the elevator all the way to the guy's apartment. The guy needed help, but I also called the maintenance line and nobody came back to clean it. So we have to live with it for three days. It's probably still up there. I, I reported it again this morning and they were busy. 
So I'd like to see that taken care of, but uh, the health is my problem here. Lack of ventilation, being in a senior and special needs community, more attention would be paid to our health needs, such as air quality, lack of air in the hallways, bad ventilation, animal feces in the common areas. Dogs are peeing all over the place in this building and nothing getting cleaned up. The rugs need to be washed by a professional. They are terrible. And those are big concerns, but the lingering in the air, the lack of proper sanitation, bring down the health of the entire building. That's just one of the things that I have problems with because I have asthma and I have bad health. So we need to work on these things. It's not just for me, it's for entire buildings that are living in bad health conditions and they need to be addressed and cleaned up. That's very important. Uh, another thing I noticed this past day is when it was raining and pouring, I could see the water coming down the wall, dripping onto the roof in the community room. The roof needs repairs. We need, that's an emergency situation. You're going to have tons of mold growing in here if we don't already have it, which I believe we do because I'm having. Mr. Chagnon, you have 30 seconds. Okay, I will pass it on to somebody else. Thank you. Is that okay? Yes, please do. Um, if All you right. could just. I'm going to pass it on to somebody else right now. Okay, here's somebody. Hello. Yes. Hi, if you can please, if you could Hello? please state your name, um, and where you yes. live, sir. My name is. My name is uh, is Ricky Peterson. I live in uh, Salvo House Five Eighteen. And uh, I just have, you know, everybody's been talking about all the air quality and, you know, the sanitation in the building. And I, you know, and I see that, you know, it maintenance as far as uh, that type of thing is very poor. But I also wanted to, to mention that uh, the, a couple of weeks ago, we got some new stoves on the fourth and fifth floor, which are, uh, which, which somebody uh, made a big mistake because these stoves were made for 220 volt and we only have 208 volt in the building. So therefore these, these plates on the stove do not heat up properly. And I would like to uh, know what the, what the uh, uh, housing is gonna do about these stoves that don't, you know, takes uh, 15 minutes, to, takes 15 minutes to heat up a, a, a boil of water. Um, and, you know, this is totally inadequate. Um, and uh, uh, so that's what I have to say. So uh, thank you. Because they are cheap, because that's what they do. That's what. <laughs> okay, um, Mr. Peterson, can you pass it to the next person? Yeah. Who, who, who want? Hi, my name is Lisa Sargent. I live at Walter Sabo. Apartment 627. Go ahead, Lisa. You're good to speak. Hi. Um, I wanted to talk about the um, the aggressiveness of the dogs at Walter Sabo. Um, particularly one dog that um, I can't name the dog because of the pit. Um, but um, this one dog has been walking around without a muzzle, which is supposed to have a muzzle, and um, they don't. And I brought it before um, before the new um, property manager started. I brought it to Jose's attention, and they just let it go. And um, now I brought it to 
uh, the new management, and um, I guess they talked to the owner, and um, they talked to the owner, but it's still happening. And um, I don't feel comfortable around this dog that is a big dog. And I thought big dogs weren't allowed at, at Walter Salvo. And um, um, that's what I, my understanding was when I first moved in, big dogs weren't allowed. But um, lately I've been seeing big dogs come to the building. Lisa, so, you have 45 seconds left. So please um, be consider the fact that big dogs not be allowed in the building. Thank you. Hello, this is Shannon Scott, Salvo 415. You're free to Locked speak. out of Scott. the meeting. Hello. Okay, I'm free to speak. Hello. So apparently this room somehow got locked. I don't know. So yes, we're on there now. Oh yeah. Mr. Scott, we heard about the roof leak and mold in your bathroom, you said. Yeah, you heard about that, huh? Uh care, but you haven't done much about it. But what I'd like to talk about also is the air conditioning. Um, pretty sure there's a unit here that works or used to work years ago. Seems like you just shut it off, you know, and it's very hot in the hallways. Um, there's people with more serious respiratory problems than myself, uh, asthma, COPD, um, just hot air and the smells because on the weekends, the trash piles up on the second floor, goes to the third floor on the weekends, you locked it for five days. Maybe you could have somebody come in and pay them a little overtime to come in on the weekends and long weekends to take care of the trash. So the bed bugs and roaches don't climb up and get into everybody's apartment. That's not too much to ask really. Because they don't give a damn about us. I know, but I'm just saying, so the air conditioner though is a real serious problem for a lot of people. I mean, the hallways are very hot and I know there's an air conditioner. We're sitting in an air conditioning community room right now. And years ago, I've been here 16 years. And years ago, there was cold air flying out of those vents and there was clean, fresh air for people. And people are gonna have respiratory problems if you continue to try to pinch money, you know, save money by giving us less here in the way of uh, comfort. I don't know. Okay. Because what we did in life doesn't... What? Mr. Velez, if you continue to interrupt, I'm going to have to take you out of the meeting. You've had your right. opportunity to talk right. and you cannot right. interrupt other residents. And I'm sorry, Mr. Scott, please proceed. Okay. Well, I got taken out of the meeting. I'm not sure why it seems like they did. Maybe not. But we will I, see. The I am not cool. interrupting. I am making. Oh, is... That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Amanda seems to be off to a great start here. What's this? Oh, battery. Thank you. So, yeah, the air conditioning. I'm pretty sure there's units down there. And you tell people some story about, like, they capture air during the night, cool air, and release it during the day when it's hot. I don't think so. Pretty sure there's a, a working or used to work air conditioner down there. Could, vent, you know, cool and ventilate. Probably wouldn't be as much mold in the building. But there's also the leaks. You're working on that maybe next year. I mean, I don't know when you plan to do it. Seems like you're sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars. You could do some maintenance. Okay, I'm good. Have a good day. Bye. I have one point of, point of order, please. Uh, I just would like for us to get back into the front I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chair. What, what's your what's your point of order, please? Um, I see the ED talking without asking permission to talk. We just got to do this unless she's chairing the meeting. So if I have to do it, I think everybody needs to go to the decorum. So that's that was it. Uh, okay, I'm going to continue to allow Jack and Director Leeper, as as usual, if there are comments to ask people to um, maintain the three minutes, etc. Uh, I'm not keeping the stopwatch myself. Um, so, and I think um, we heard a couple of times interruptions, I think three or four times, and that resident was asked to please stop interrupting while others are speaking. It's really hard to do it so quickly to mute the person before they unmute themselves and begin to, to speak. So 
it's unfortunate, but we're doing the okay, best. Okay, I will. I will oh. stop. Point of order. I just thought it should be coming from you. That's that's all as the chair. And I I wish we could all be a little respectful. And please don't interrupt with stuff like that. I think it's it's really difficult. I think that was directed to the resident. Is that correct? I, I think that's what the commissioner was asking. Yes, please, Mr. Villas, we won't hear your response, but we do appreciate you've had your time to speak and we're gonna let other residents continue to speak. There are those still waiting in line at Salvo House to grab Mr. Chagnon's phone. Hello, my name is Roy C. Martin, 81 Con Street, apartment 529. Hello, Mr. Martin. Yeah, everyone talking about the, hello? You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Yes, can hear you. Oh, okay. All right. I hear everyone talking about the air conditioners on the roof. All right. We have air circulators up there, which caused the fire one time. The fire department had them shut off, and so we couldn't use them again. That was during John Height's uh, administration. Uh, as far as central air conditioning, we never had that. Right, as long as, and I've been here 22 years. So, and in here, right, this right here is runoff from Highland Valley's air conditioning down here, right, which is a totally different thing. They pay for their own stuff. So, right, uh, I don't believe that, you know, but, you know, as far as the air circulator, right, uh, it was shut off until it could be fixed where it wasn't going to catch fire. And I don't know, during John Height, John, it was towards the end of John Height, and, um, and he got done, and nothing ever was passed on. Now, all this money that's been passed on, uh, stoves, right? You know, I don't even know about mine, if mine works or not, because I just didn't plug it. I unplugged it, and that was it. Uh, you know, so I don't use my stove. I use my uh, uh, microwave. Now, right, the other thing. All right, you know, now I've seen a lot, of, you know, there's a lot of people say about the black dog. And, you know, I see the black dog and he's got a muzzle on every time I see him. All right, now, all right, there's a lot of people saying that he hasn't been. Now, I've been out there in the yard when she's come out at night. And, uh, you know, he's, he has had a, he has had a muzzle on. Right. So, uh, you know, right. Um, I think people have to look a little closer. Right. Uh, because it's a black muzzle that she has on it. Anyways, right. That's side the point. That's talk about dogs. Oh I don't have a dog. I have a bird. All right. Uh, my bird Butch is doing OK. All right. Now I have a turtle. So uh, but as far as anything else here, yeah, right. We got leaks in the roof, right? I know we got leaks in the roof. We got leaks right over where, uh, where they set serving the meals down here. And that's because when they did the power washing out here, they lifted the edge of the roof up, right, with the power washer. And it never got repaired. So, okay, right. And as far as maintenance, right, the maintenance, because you took so many maintenance men, spread them out all over the place, Kara, and up on the mountain and everywhere else, right? We got, what, three maintenance men here now? So we don't even have maintenance people to do the maintenance work that has to be done here. Mr. Martin, you got 15 orders. seconds left. 100 work orders a day and uh, three maintenance men to take care of. Okay. All right, a lot of people get mad at me because of the black dog. Okay, bye. Hi, this is Cheryl from Salvo. I just want to comment on the black dog. Despite what um, Mr. Martin thinks he knows, I've seen the dog personally up front and close with no muzzle because I had to run across the yard to grab my dog to make sure he was safe. My dog is a real therapy dog, recognized by the ADA and CCA, which is my insurance company, who pay for me to bring him to my his vet and the groomers to make sure his health and hygiene 
<clears throat> are in order. My insurance company pays for his medical rides, okay? Because he's an intricate part of my therapeutic treatment. So that woman was supposed to have that dog muzzled on this property at all times or else face eviction. She's been caught several times by several people with no muzzle on. And I don't care what Roy Martin has to say because he's wrong. He's a personal friend of hers. But that's the bottom line. That dog's gonna kill another dog on this property and it better not be mine. Uh, I think we got one more person here. Oh. We're checking you're muted. It looks like. Are you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Are you all, you have one more person you said? One, two, two more people. Hold on. I'm going to give you the phone to somebody else now. Hi, my name's Colleen Jardine from Walter Salva House 401. I have a couple complaints regarding about the elevator. They're not cleaned half of the time. They have dog shit on the floors. And the other thing is the restrooms um, downstairs are never clean. And they look like the handicapped bathroom never gets cleaned at all. So I wish to see them get it cleaned. Thank you. Thank you. And there's one other person. I think, I don't know. I think everybody is all set. One person asked, they said they're all set down there then. Um, hold on. One person here. And hello, you know. hello, this is Helen Fitzgerald. Uh, I'm 713 at Salvo House. And I, I do have a, a, a complaint about the black dog. He still is at large without a muzzle a lot of the times. And it, it, it's, uh, it's uh, very uh, threatening and very difficult for people here who have little dogs. You know, my dog just passed away. But anyway, I feel, I feel very concerned about the welfare of the other people here and their small dogs. And apparently, um, a little while ago, when I said something to her, she just said, oh, he's a great dog. Of course he's great dog, but we can't trust that he's going to um, attack another. And he, go, he, he, you know, his breed, he goes for the little, little uh, creatures, little dogs. Thank you very much for your time. Bye. Thank you. And Mr. Chagan, I believe that's everyone at the Salva House. Um, I do have one guest that was just on a minute ago that got interrupted because somebody else was talking and was wondering if she could finish her, her conversation. Yes. Hold on, and I believe that's the last person. All right, I'd just like to add that I've been filing complaints and putting things in writing since 2021 about this dog and nothing's been done. The property manager has never acknowledged anything. He hasn't acknowledged, he didn't acknowledge videos. He didn't acknowledge written reports since 2021 with this dog. And I'm sick of it. It's an ongoing problem. I'm tired of the safety and security of myself and my dog being threatened every time I walk out of my apartment in this building. Just for the record, was that Cheryl? Yes, that was Cheryl. Okay, thank you. Is that everyone, Mr. Chapman? That is everyone in the community room. So you could continue on with your meeting. Thank you very Thanks, much for. I wanted to. There's Thank there's you, one other, there's one yeah. other other individual who I'm not sure if they're a tenant or not. It is Felicia. You have the ability to unmute yourself. Hello everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. I just was um, wanting to hear some of the concerns of our community members, and I don't have any specific concerns myself, but wanted to um, just be part of and present and learn what is happening in our community. Thank you and, so much. And is so Felicia's not a resident, is that correct, Jack? It doesn't sound like it. Okay, thank you. Felicia, uh, uh, Felicia just unmuted to confirm that. It, yes, uh, you're, yes, Chairman Person, I, I am not a resident uh, okay. community member here in Northampton community. All right, well, thank you for joining. You. We move on from the resident comments um, to staff comments, if there are any. I'll turn it over to you, Jack. Yeah, Chairperson Carney, I'd actually like to put my employee hat on today and make a comment. Okay. 
As a member of the executive team, the day following the June 2023 board meeting, several staff members came to myself and Sharon Kimball regarding feeling embarrassed, uneasy, and very uncomfortable and asked that we speak to the board on their behalf. Several board members have made comments stating that staff are, spe are not speaking at board meetings out of fear of retaliation by the executive director, and that simply is not true. Just that our team of professionals are following the chain of command. As employees in a position of authority within the organization, we have a responsibility to address the uneasiness and discomfort our subordinates felt and a responsibility to create an inclusive work environment, which unfortunately we are unable to do when the cause of such discomfort is out of our control. After speaking with our direct supervisor, the executive director, we thought very carefully about whether we wanted to speak up, weighing the costs and the benefits of doing so. We ultimately decided a statement to the Board of Commissioners was necessary as everyone deserves respect and everyone's voice is worth hearing. And Jack, I would like to add, there were several members of a neighboring city council present at the last meeting and vocally expressed their concerns about the decorum of the Northampton board members, including one statement. If I'm being totally honest, I have deep reservations about this board. I've never seen this type of disregard for decorum or treatment of others. I have very little faith that this board could deliver. Many staff and members of the public echo these sentiments. Several staff commented that during and following the board meeting, spouses and family members expressed disbelief in some of the statements they overheard and the lack of professionalism witnessed through the public meeting. The appearance of a dysfunctional and unprofessional board not only makes the board as a whole look poorly in the public's eye, but reflects poorly on our entire staff as well. It is our hope that all board members reflect on the decorum of the past few meetings, and as staff, we are looking forward to returning to the professional, civil, and collaborative meetings we are all accustomed to. Additionally, Sharon, although this letter started from you and I, other staff members have had a chance to watch the last meeting if they were not able to attend and also review our statement. A total of 33 of our 37 staff members asked us to speak on their behalf tonight and signed off on this statement. The four staff members who have not asked to be included did not attend the last meeting or have not had the time to watch June's meeting. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Point of information, can I respond? No, um, this isn't the time for board to respond to either resident, staff, or public okay. comments. But I do want to ask, thank you, Jack, for your comments and Sharon. Are there other members of the staff present that wish to offer a comment? Okay, Jack, I'll turn it off to you then to moderate any public comment that's still present. I believe all public is accounted for, but I'm going to ask one more time. There's someone identified as just Mary, and then there are the two individuals named Judy. Um, I don't know if any of you would like to speak at this time as a public member. And Chairperson Carney, it does not look like any of them are unmuting. I believe we are through. Okay, all then I think right now we're moving right on with the agenda which would next be the executive director's report. Yes, Madam Chair, right. one moment. Right. Thank right. you. So the executive director's monthly summary for July, 2023, our GPR was $224,600, total of which collected as of uh, the date uh, was 179, 154.99, which is 80%. Um, we had uh, no public housing certifications for the current mm -hmm. month, but 65 Section 8. Um, 64 of the Section 8s uh, recertified, one expired due to waiting on paperwork. Um, our wait list, one bedroom has 96 for federal, uh, two bedroom has 34 federal, three bedroom, 23 federal, four bedroom, two federal, section eight has 58. There are 16,891 applicants on the family state waiting list and 4,397 on the elderly disabled state waiting list. Uh, public housing had three move outs, section eight had 10. Public housing had three move-ins, Section 8 had five, and public housing has two on notice. 
Uh, end of May, uh, month vacant ready is two, end of month vacant unready is five for a total of seven, six of which are pre-leased. Um, and um, we completed four make readies, three of which were complete rehabs. We took in 401 uh, work orders, uh, started the month with 51. We completed 321 work orders. And so we uh, ended the month with 80 that we were still working on. Um, executive director follow-ups, a resident um, last month's meeting, uh, their concern was that the new stoves at Salvo were not getting hot enough. Um, the action taken, we have uh, been in regular talks with the state about this project and held off the remaining floor until they were able to provide a, they being the state, was able to provide us with a solution. The issue lies in a newer regulation which limits the temperature due to fire safety concerns as well. However, in the meantime, hot plates were purchased for anyone who would like them. Um, and if anyone is on here that didn't know about that, uh, if you would like a hot plate because you got a new stove, um, while the uh, issue is being remedied by the state, we will happily provide you with a hot plate. Um, the project man manager um, representative of the state um, has brought up the, brought it up the ladder and they're working with the manufacturer to try and find a solution. Another concern that was brought up were the vent fans causing mold at bathrooms in Forsander. Um, our team spoke with the tenant association to gather more information about the concern and working with the state to be able to bring the capital project up to a sooner timeline. Um, and as mentioned at the meeting, it's already on the capital plan, but it was originally not scheduled till 2025. We are making working with the state to try to make this project happen sooner. Um, and we'll notify residents if we have a response when we have a response from the state. Um, the Tenants Association was not able to tell us which units um, yeah. as their uh, survey was done anonymously, so they didn't even know which apartments. Um, and so our plan is to review um, the uh, annual unit inspections that were done um, and see if there's any uh, items that are identified on that um, and potentially um, also conduct another uh, unit inspection. Another resident concern reported was not receiving a response about a request for a higher toilet. Um, the action taken, uh, the property manager had directed the resident uh, to speak with our resident services coordinator for the property, who is Danielle, and almost also emailed the resident several days before the previous board meeting asking if a four inch lift would be sufficient. And the resident as of four o'clock this afternoon has still yet to respond to either staff member. Another concern was uh, the condition of a unit um, and the roof leaks at Salvo and the condition of the POW flag. Um, the resident was emailed about the condition of the unit and asked to transfer to a unit that was currently ready and the resident refused to transfer and has refused and, and has been referred to legal for mediation. There are no active leaks at this time, but current uh, there is a current fish project underway with design architect and is supposed to go out to bid mid-September. We have ordered a new American flag and POW flag for the Salvo House, and they will put, be put on the poll once we receive them. I don't ordinarily update the board with um, staffing changes, uh, but I planned, um, it was it was brought up by a commissioner. Um, and so as an update, um, as I do with the service department staff and to allow for all staff to be familiar with all properties, we recently uh, moved property managers around to different sites. Um, also with the takeover of East Hampton, we put a seasoned property manager at the East Hampton office, which opened um, a property manager position here in Northampton. I offered this position to the former ED of East Hampton, who was looking to work for a couple of years until their retirement. Um, this has allowed us to have a dedicated person to do the waitlist management of all the public housing sites, as DHCD indicated that that was what was necessary with their new CHAMP website. I also wanted to let the board know that our family RFC recently left us to finish her master's degree and move to Chicago. However, I'm excited to announce that we have hired a new RFC uh, for our family sites. His name is Samson Melendez, and we're excited to welcome, to him, welcome him to our team. Today was his first day, and he worked for the Department of Family and Children, and he's fully bilingual. 
The Summer Eats program also started July 10th at both Hampshire and Florence Heights. This program will run Monday through Thursday until August 3rd. Children 18 and under can get lunch for free during the assigned time frame. We had a flow, slow first week, but more and more children are, to, are participating daily. A Northampton family of Barrett Street, Joseph and Cheryl Hughes, reached out to us delighted to see that we were, we were providing this meals these meals and wanted um, to know how they could help. Today, we received a very generous check from them to, to purchase popsicles and drinks for the kids that come to the program. I'd like to personally extend a very light, large thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Hughes for their generous donation. The Northampton Survival Center will be piloting also a meat delivery program at Hampshire Heights and Florence Heights starting in August. They will be bringing their van to the properties once a month with meat available to those who are already signed up for food delivery. They can receive one pound of meat per person. So ends my executive director report. Thank you. Um, so if there are no questions regarding this report, I see Commissioner Tarbutton, yes. Yeah, I do. Um, hi, um, I just have a quick question. The, what? It was a resident who was, was a resident who was. Oh, okay. I just oh. wanted clarification on the executive directors. No, I'm sorry, but it's not time for any other public. This is only for board discussion at this point. Commissioner oh. Tarbutton? Yeah, it's very interesting. And I, I, I do like to hear from staff. Uh, I think it's important. I think it's important that you do get up and speak. Uh, and I, I, this is probably the, the only, maybe one or two other times. I, I think that you are, I think you do a, actually do a great job. And so I will apologize for my, <laughs> sometimes I don't hit the mute uh, quick enough, but I have gotten just as many calls, letters from how the board treated myself and another man of color on board. They were shocked, couldn't believe it. And you're right, they don't wanna be a part of this and I, I don't blame them. And so I'm seeing now, now that Mr. Jack came and helped me set up this email on my handy dandy computer, uh, I see that somebody, uh, I don't know if the chair or whoever is doing the DEI courses. Thank goodness, I've been here three years and I've been waiting every day and I, I look forward to that. And so, um, but I also have a question and I wanna ask this to the ED is the person that's coming here, she was a former ED at East Hampton Housing Authority. And I assume that's true because I had heard about her like five years ago. I thought she would be here today. I, I think if this is the same person, I met her in May at the Public uh, Housing Tenants Union. And I was very surprised to see her and another ED at those meetings. I felt like that was a really great effort on her part. But I'm curious, like, is it a coincidence that this all happened? Nobody knows about a meeting. Kara goes in there, she gets a job, and the woman's coming over here. Is she getting the same salary that she had here as a property manager as she had over there as an ED? And also, if I don't know how East Hampton people would feel. Was that taken into effect, uh, into uh, consideration? If they uh, were so unhappy for whatever reason, I wasn't, I, I didn't go to the meeting, so I wouldn't know. I didn't even know what was going on. I didn't know we were go, making, you say takeover, but you put, presented it as though it's managing. So I, I, words seem so forced. So I'm just wondering um, how people would feel. I, I spoke to her very briefly and um, welcome her to the other meeting. So I don't know much about her, but I think East Hampton, you can put it on me. I'm used to people calling me the angry black woman. Okay, fine, I'll be that if you like. That doesn't hurt me is those who are silent. What is Martin Luther King said? The silent words of goodwill people hurts much more than the hateful words of ill will people. So I think you're pointing a finger at me. If we had DEI training, probably some of these things wouldn't have happened because mostly what I learned with implicit bias is unintentional. And the first one I would I tried to find a quote from President Biden to Barack Obama. And he didn't mean that in that way, but I don't think he, well, he wouldn't do that now, but. I think my white board members, white staff who know uh, who know the, the ED and a different thing, good, you're taken up for, you even get an attendant taken up for, but how am I treated? Someone said in the one meeting, I didn't look at it, they saw somebody who was a former city council doing this one, I was talking, I didn't know it, this and this and talking through the whole thing, I didn't remember that. But I do, when I looked it over, it was like, wow, we got decorum, <laughs> we don't practice it. 
And I also want to say something. I do appreciate people talking, but I know I seem like I was directed against uh, Tom O'Connor. But I have to say, Sharon, in the last meeting we had, you talked about walking the ED's dog. And I would like for folks to have things that, what is your job description that you do? And that is a friend. She can get a dog walker, leave the dog at home. It really does. You see a lot of people talking about dogs. It really, it's not part of your job description. If it is, I'd like to see it. And um, here's the tar button. I think this is getting off topic about. Well, it was it was her uh, her her report that it, came yeah, about that. It, the executive director was not. Re I think that you were re uh, actually responding to the staff comments that were made during the staff comment time as yes. well. So I do appreciate I that, them speaking. Yes, of course. I wish more. I heard you time. say that, but I don't know that. I think that directly right now we just want if we just want to have. There's any clarifications that people need regarding. The director's yes. report has just given, and we heard from Commissioner Tarbutton. Is yeah, there? I, can you tell me how much, if the same salary she made in East Hampton, property manager or around the range is the same thing? I'm, I'm not sure it's appropriate in, in open session to discuss personnel salary. Um, it wasn't something that was raised. I'm going to actually, before. You if, can email me, please. I'm going to hold that for now. I'm going to turn first. I saw Commissioner Jones. Then I see Commissioner Cancel. I, I think Commissioner Cancel was up before I was. Okay. Commissioner Cancel, please. And then Commissioner Jones. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to make a quick comment in regards to the um, executive uh, director report. Um, I thought... Um, I really appreciated um, how comprehensive it, 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 it was tonight versus other times. Uh, the concerns of the residents being addressed and then uh, publicly um, uh, spoken about here. So I appreciate that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And Commissioner Jones, please. Thank you. Um, Kara, is there any update on the Corticelli Street? property anything new on that i'm just just a general question um we we um closed on that deal geez six months ago um so it's under new ownership and has been for quite some time uh attorney o'connor do you happen to know off the top of your head what our closing date was on that and if not i can uh get you the closing date commissioner jones if you'd so like it not off the top of my head. Um, six months ago sounds about right. And once it closed, we have no ownership interest in it whatsoever. So other than to watch what's happening, we wouldn't have any say in 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 what's going on there. But I can All look right. up that date quickly and I'll get it to you momentarily. Um, and so the other thing, um, Commissioner Jones, is that um, I do know that the city, uh, you know, it had come up during the during the closing um, that there was some um, uh, thing with frontage. Um, the city was working with the new owner to be able to build anyway, even though there was some easement, um, and and it appeared to have worked itself out. So I'm not sure uh, what they're doing with it. Great, right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Um, seeing no other hands, I'm going to move on to the old business. Oh, oh actually, it's the um, sec the acceptance of the previous minutes, the minutes of the June 26th meeting. So is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded to accept the uh, minutes as recorded for the June 26th meeting. Are there any uh, additions, corrections, or deletions? Okay, would you call the roll, please, Secretary Lieber? Yes. Um, All right, I, I asked a question. Uh, there oh, was, okay. some, I'm sorry, where's the chair? There was yeah, some right questions. Here. There was some questions, and did some things get clarified? Because I didn't have the uh, revisions. I didn't have that. I didn't see the revisions. I think one came out and then another one came out. I'm confused because it was a. It's in the board resources. It's in the packet that you have. Okay. Once I got the thing that I was being, somebody was threatening to sue me. I, I, I was confused. So, okay. Well, so I'll abstain. Okay. So, so this is the roll call for the approval of the June 23, 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney. Uh, yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Kensell. 
Vice Chairperson Cancel. Uh, okay, I'll skip him. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Brooks? Yes. Commissioner Richards? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? You said you were abstaining, correct? Most definitely, yes. Thank you. Uh, and is there uh, Commissioner Cancel? Are you here? Looks Does like he's gone at the him? moment. He's not here. Okay. So um, I'll mark him as absent for this uh, vote. Okay, thank you. Jack, if you could keep an eye on the um, waiting room to see if uh, he tries to join again. Absolutely. Chair, I got a, a point of information, an order. If he comes back into the meeting, can he vote on that? Or because he was out of the meeting, he misses that vote? What, what happens? He misses that vote. Um, do we want to suspend everything right now and see if someone can call him and see if we can see whether he wants to record his approval or uh, I, I, I'll leave that up to the rest of the board. Do you want to take, I, a, I can, moment? Do you I, want to take a moment I, to try to contact Commissioner Cancel by phone? I can, I can call him if you if Thank you'd you. Like. Okay, so we'll be on hold. Why don't we go on a recess until we see what uh, what we can find out from Commissioner oh, Cancel. Point of information. Can't we do just, oh, well, she's gone. I'm still hey, here. I'm sorry. Can we do what we did once when my thing blacked out? We went on and then we went back. You asked if that was okay. And then we continued. Um, unless everybody needs a break, but I've never had a break. We've never had a break. No, we don't need a break. We're just making a phone call to Commissioner Cancel. Got it. He dropped Thank off. you. Thanks for no the break. Clarity. No break. I'm just going to run into the loo, if you don't yeah. mind. Madam Madam Chair, um, Commissioner Can uh, Vice Chairperson Cancel's phone went directly to voicemail, so I presume that his phone likely died, and he'll charge it and dial in. So, um, if we want to take another roll call vote after, you know, if he comes it, back in, could, later, yeah, we could suspend this item of business until a few more minutes until we see if he comes on. Uh, but that would mean doing the same thing for the next couple of items, which is the old business that comes up. So actually, if you think that this might be worth um, giving it a minute or two to wait, I'll leave that up to Question is, I don't, I, the chair. I don't know uh, Robert's rules very much, uh, but don't you table this until he comes back? Is that what we're doing? Well, I was just going to call for a suspension. Well, uh, um, we're just going to suspend business for five minutes while we see if there is any problem with Commissioner Cancel. Unless you want to move on. Yeah, his, phone, his phone is still dead, Madam Chair. Um, have, and right now someone. you have four yays and one abstention. Um, someone just that, called laptop. So I don't know if that's Mr. Cancel. Oh, okay, Cancel. good. Can you, if someone just joined and then that would likely be Mr. Uh, Commissioner Cancel. Let's see, can we reach person laptop? Hello, Mr. Laptop, can you unmute yourself, please? I've sent them a request to unmute. So have I. Okay, well, it could be just someone else then and not Commissioner Cancel. So um, we can um, move on then. We can just accept the vote as recorded and the technical difficulties that Commissioner Cancel had created his departure at whatever time that was at the meeting. Um, I don't know because I don't know if it's the will of the body to wait to see if we're going to there's no way to text or you try to text as well, right? Um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Jones has his hand raised. I'm sorry. Yes, Jeff. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I would like to move ahead. Um, the vote on the, the minutes was four to zero to one abstention. Um, it's not going to change the outcome. And we're still operating here with a quorum. And I would like to think that if that, that happened to me, um, which it has in mm -hmm. other meetings and other places that the body would move on until I could fix it. Okay. Well, um, hearing no objection. Okay. okay. I, I'm going to just hearing no objection. We're going to move well, on. And I, I, I just ask, I just politely ask chair if when he gets back, every vote counts. If when he gets back, can we then go back to it? I, you know, I'm trying to, uh, so he can vote on that matter. Is that what you're talking about? Commissioner Jones? 
Yeah, you know. I, I agree yeah. with that. Okay, that's fine. So, but that'll what I'm suggesting is that it presents the same situation for the next two items of business. We'll be going back to each of them. So everything will remain open. So so this matter will suspend for now and we'll move on to the next item, which is the old business of approving the minutes of the May meeting. Motion to approve the May 2023 minutes. Thank you, Commissioner. Brown. Second. Moved and seconded to approve. Any additions, corrections, or deletions? Okay, so why don't we hold off on this one as well? Because- uh, We, we can't vote on this and then come back to it? I thought that's what we- No, no, we're not. Uh, well, I don't think that we, if, we're not gonna, if we're gonna allow Commissioner Cancel to vote, we should all just vote at the same time. It doesn't make sense to have five people vote. Okay. We're gonna have, we're gonna, we'll take the vote when he returns. We hadn't discussed this in the previous issue where we had already taken the vote before the topic of what we should do when he was not present to vote. Right, so I think you, this, yes, Commissioner Richards. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I think we should uh, move forward. If Commissioner um, uh, Cancel has left the meeting and can't get back in, um, you know, we, we still need to do our business. I, we can't let that. I was having problems, but I agree with uh, Commissioner Jones. We need to move forward. This is not the way we should so, be. Madam okay. Chair, just so that you know, uh, Commissioner Cancel's phone is still going directly to voicemail as yes, though I, it's dead. I understand. It sounds as though, or he could be in a completely um, un, un yeah, inaccessible don't know when area. Yeah. So I'm, I, I think that, I, as I understand Commissioner Jones, um, were you in favor of us moving on with a vote on this matter? We've already had it moved and seconded, and there were no additions, corrections, or deletions. I think, um, we, could, I think we could all vote. Okay, then, then why don't we vote add, on this matter, and then we'll... the commissioner when he returns. Okay. Then, um, in that case, please call the roll. Yes, this motion is for approval of the May 2023 minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Thank you. Vice uh, Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. I'm going to abstain from this one as well. Commissioner Richards. Yes. And uh, I'm going to mark uh, Commissioner Cancel as absent at the present moment. Okay, thank you. And so the next item of business was the unfinished business that was moved and seconded um which was to accept the low bidder for legal services for three years do you want to read that order please secretary Lieber? yes did you uh you wanted me to read um uh, the the order the order was made and seconded at the last meeting and then we continued it to this meeting um you can refresh our memories to say i think it was commissioner uh, oh it, it was commissioner richards that um uh, yes, originally this onto was, the table and Commissioner Brooks. Yes, yes. it was ori originally Commissioner Richards made the okay. motion uh, last month. Yep. Um, and Commissioner Brooks seconded the motion last month. Yes, and, then and so then, uh, uh, and then it was table. continued. Yes, so or yep. uh, tabled. So yep. now, uh, what is typically done is the chair asks the secretary to read the motion, and so it will be placed on the table. And hearing, oh, I see Commissioner. Commissioner Tarbutton, you have your hand. Oh, not raised. Yes, okay. yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, Before I do we... have it raised. Yes. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the issue with the uh, lawyer, the NHA uh, attorney, uh, attorney uh, retainer. The, Is that what the, about? the order, yeah. yeah, the unfinished business of the three-year contract for legal. Okay. I have, I have a, a couple of comments. Firstly, I want to thank everybody. Well, hold, hold on one second. No, no. It's not the time for discussion of the matter. Oh. You had okay. a point of information about the order or about, because it was made and seconded. And then what happens is the secretary reads it before the chair opens uh, the discussion. Okay. No, I, I just got the packet and I've read everything, but go right ahead. You want to read the order then, please? Sure. Sure. This motion from May 2023 was to accept a low bidder for legal services for three years with attorney Thomas O'Connor. Okay, that was made and seconded. And do people have all the materials and the resources? 
And I have the floor is open for discussion. Well, firstly, I really appreciated the packet I, uh, that I received. Thank you uh, to the staff who brought it over here to me. I actually think I would like to have both emails and packet. And I read like a very good novel, Attorney Connors, uh, O'Connor's, uh, you know, request and uh, his resume and all that. And I was, um, I had a couple of questions with that. Um, firstly, I guess the question would be to uh, uh, the executive director is when did you, when and where did you put these uh, bidding? Because uh, when did you do that? And you said it was just two uh, bid, uh, people who uh, were bidding on this position? This, um, this bidding process was done um, in accordance with the um, purchasing and procurement um, that we have. Um, it was advertised in the Gazette and on the register. Um, we got a request for services from uh, Attorney O'Connor and one from Royal, which you were already given a copy. Okay, what, what register are you talking about? There's, it's called Central Register. It's part okay. of... Uh, it's part of our whole uh, overall operations. Um, okay. And so, Jack, do you have the exact date that it was um, that it was advertised in the Gazette in accordance with the regulation? I can find it. I don't have it in front of me, but it was per our procurement policy and DHCDs. It was run on the central registry as well as in a local newspaper, which for us is the Gazette. Um, and I can find that date. Well, okay. Well, I, I, I think that'd be nice. I get like four or five free free emails from the Gazette and I, I can't afford it. I'm still paying off something uh, to even subscribe to the thing. But it's very interesting because I know like what they said with the ED's position, there are guidelines by uh, DHCD, PHN 2021-03, that there are guidelines for this and they want to broad, broaden the applicant pool, at least for the ED. So I don't know how that would be so different with an attorney. And I just know that who did it go out to? If more people saw it or word got around, use some non-traditional advertisements. I spoke about this in the city council meeting. I listed off 10 one, I think it was the health department woman. She was like, oh, I have to get those names. I just think that there could be a lot more people if you'd broaden it out, um, who probably so, would be interested in it as well. Um, Commissioner Tarbot in Springfield, the central register uh, advertises that across the whole entire state of Massachusetts. But I'm so, just saying. So the, the central register does that. It, it, pu it puts it across the whole state of Massachusetts. The newspaper is just for the local um, attorneys that would, or the local vendors that might have interest. Um, and so we both did it on, in the paper, but in the online version as well, following our procurement policies. Well. I, I, I haven't been trained in the procurement policy, so I don't really know what they are. All I'm going is by what you tell me. And I'd like to ask a little bit more questions about that. That's all I'm saying. And I think part of DEI training, <laughs> they have said, look, broaden the applicant pool. How many people know about that? I don't know about it. I know about Nairo's job uh, registry. I didn't see it there because I watched it once a month. So I think just the appearances, you know, the optics of it is that you extend it to extend it out. Not everybody. And I, I, I would just think that I feel like that didn't happen. And I have, um, so I'll get off of that, but I just wanted to say, um, attorney O'Connor, very good resume. So you got three jobs. Is it? You're working for a UMass, uh, teaching, you're teaching at HCC and then you're teaching here. Is that true? Um, oh, Eric, would you not, know? I'm not teaching um, at at uh, the Northampton Housing Authority. I, I think you just misspoke there, Commissioner Tarbutton. But I represent the Northampton Housing Authority, um, and if you technically a, the fourth job would be I'm a private attorney that has a, a law office uh, that that has clients as well. But my lead client is obviously the Northampton Housing Authority. Oh, I'm sorry if that was a mis if you heard it as a misspoken. Thing. I said you you're teaching at the college. I know you're not teaching here. I would like actually you would. I would like for your students to come here and teach. Have people know about the grievance policy. Know your rights. That would be nice. Um, but what I didn't see on your resume 
which is actually quite impressive. I didn't see the dates of the training. I saw you did some training with HUD, but uh, I didn't see the dates of it. I don't know, it was 10 years, 100 years ago. I mean, I don't know, uh, most recent, because I think that um, I have some questions about some of the uh, questions that you've mentioned in this group and some of the decisions. And I wonder, for example, are you familiar with PHN 2021-03? And how often do you get somebody's putting a hand over the face? Please don't do that. That's rude. But I'm just wondering how often do you get the um, PHNs from the DHCD? Um, and it would be nice if you put some dates on them so we can see how, you know, how relevant that is. Okay. I, don't know, the, I don't know the dates off the top of my head. Um, they're, you know, they're ongoing. The Housing Authority had a series of trainings over the last several months and I sat in on many of those um and then I I sat in for an hour at the at the board training you were at a few months ago the one that was all day when you came back from the lunchtime you, that's you, you sat in that for, for the that middle for about an hour of that yes and then the the notices you asked about um I don't get them all what I do get as general counsel is if any of the executive team, Kara or Jack or Sharon has any questions, legal questions related to those notices, then I get them and I answer their questions. So um, I don't get them all. I, I do regularly, I know where they're posted and I regularly look at them and read them. I do want to give. Uh, I do want to give uh, other com uh, commissioners an opportunity. I still have the floor. I, I wasn't finished. I, I didn't know I had a time on this. I'm just, thank you. I appreciate him answering the question. But but all right, I, I, I thank you uh, for sharing this. I do think that it is important if you kept up with the PHN because I, 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 legality, nobody wants to be sued for anything. But if we did the right thing by going over to the East Hampton, the way it was conducted, not that it did, but the way it was conducted. And it seemed like that's going against it. Could you please not shake your head when I'm talking, please, commissioners, you know who you are. But if that was uh, above board, and that, was point of order. Uh, that is a point of order. We're not yes, talking about what order. happened. You're talking about a vote that we took at the last <laughs> meeting for the East right. Hampton contract, and that's not relevant to this discussion. Right. Well, it's a PHN. That's what I'm saying. If he's not, if he's looking for somebody to go to it, I watch the PHNs every week. So I would think someone when it's dealing with a state issue that you would be uh, abreast of what's going on and knowing that too. So we don't violate it. And then um, I would just ask, I looked right here, and I guess this goes for you and another staff. I saw nothing about walking a dog. So if you could please, I know that's not a part of it. It's just the optics of it. Because a lot of people here, as you heard, say, I can't bring my dog out my door without a lease on. So just think about that. I would not have been going to a, a university law school to walk the ED dog. It makes it seem like you're impartial. and. My last comment, I would think that you you have enough work that you do. I would like to see it open or expanded to a lawyer who would take con tenants concerns. You ever see these legal uh, uh, contracts? The average person doesn't know that. Kara said that you can't even, for example, explain what the grievance policy is because that would be against the purpose because you're the, I thought you were an attorney for everybody, stakeholders. Point of order, point of order. Yes. Um, Commissioner Richards is suggesting that you're kind of straying off topic here. Okay. I, is that the point of order that you're raising? Yes, it is. Well, it would be, I, wow, y'all can kind of read each other's mind. That's pretty amazing. I want that skill. But I'm just uh, saying that it would be nice to represent clients, not legally, but training. You're a teacher. You know that training. Um, so I'm going to vote no. I think you're the most handsome guy in this whole town but I'm gonna vote no on this. Thank you. Commissioner Richards. Uh, yes, I just wanna speak um, in favor of uh, the low bid uh, Tom O'Connor for attorney. He has been a stalwart uh, um, resource for us for years. We have good outcomes. We have good rent collections. He represents us well in housing court. He knows his stuff. He goes, in my mind, above and beyond in helping us uh, when we have issues. Uh, as a former chair, I always counted on Tom 
to be um, a parliamentary <laughs> reminder for me when I got uh, off track. So uh, I am very much in favor of uh, continuing uh, Attorney O'Connor's uh, and we'll vote yes on the, uh, on the motion. Okay. Uh, I, I totally concur with everything Marilyn Richards just said about Tom O'Connor. Um, I've known the man for, I don't know, 15, 16 years, whatever. Um, and he has always been uh, able to answer any question that I've ever asked him about any problem in Northampton housing. So he, uh, he, he's a legitimate guy um, to have in this place. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Um, and is there not, Commissioner Jones, did you have any comments on this motion? Um, just that I tried to um, support it at the last meeting um, before we tabled it <clears throat> and um, with all the years I've been here, um, I think I had a very strong working relationship, especially when I was chair and we always relied, relied on attorney O'Connor to um, catch us when we went off stray. Um, and there was one big incident that happened um, when I was chair um, relatively early in Kara's tenure and Tom was all over it. And I always appreciated that at the time and we fixed it and we righted the ship and we never looked back. So um, I'm in support um, of the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. And I think we've heard from everyone. Uh, you wanted to speak a second time, Commissioner? Yeah, I wanted to respond to the, the comments. And, um, you through know, chair, hmm? you, you, through the chair, who would you like to address? I would like to address the comments that were made with uh, attorney. Oh, all of the commissioners. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I do. I think you're right. Uh, see, I, I again, I see things differently. I just have a different viewpoint and a different lens thing. Uh, when I first got here, I noticed Attorney General, uh, you we got an OML violation the first what six months that Kara was here. You were the attorney then. Did you not see that was going on? That that was a violation. And also. In these meetings, you spoke out and you're an attorney, you know you can't, you're not a part of the board. I, in some way, it feels like you're used as a weapon because I normally, when I see an attorney and they Point say something, order. I'm like, it's God. But Point of order. And can you say what it is instead of just saying out what's the order? Yeah, you're order. way off track. Well, you're talking about okay. this. Yeah. Well, I'm just telling you, I got questions. I thought I'd like some leeway in asking that. I'm a Southerner, we go around. And I just think, I remember when an, uh, another woman of color on board. You wouldn't let talk, wouldn't let talk. And you didn't even say that resident okay. board members can speak. I had to find that out somewhere else. So I just think you are in deference to the ED. And I know Commissioner Jones said when he when you first came, you helped with OM, uh, office meeting uh, thing, and that you were good at that. And I was just like, well, we've got fine. And we paid a lot of money. I never knew how much. And I just think, like, I'm going tomorrow to two open meeting laws, one by the attorney general, I go once a month. I appreciate that, but we can learn too. And, um, you know, other than that, I just think that if you if if, if you ever were resident centered, I'd respect you. I already think you're gorgeous, but I would respect you. Thank you. I still and say I no. That, uh, um, did you have your hand raised again, Commissioner Jones? You're muted though. I, I did. Um, yeah, thank you. Part of the reason we got an um, OML violation is because um, Attorney O'Connor wasn't there. And if he had been there, I don't think we would have gotten in trouble because as he's demonstrated through the years, he would have corrected the course and none of that would have happened. So to blame him for something that he wasn't even directly there to witness, let alone rule on or make an interpretation, is just short-sighted. I'll leave it at that. Well, I'm not, this isn't a back and forth. I'm no, I just want a point of clarification. No. Thank you for that. I didn't know that. I mean, we have an attorney. I can't believe that they weren't part of all this stuff. So it's confusing. Okay. Commissioner Jones did mention that last meeting, and he mentioned it just prior to your speaking. We're not going back and forth, and I hate this, but... If you have a final, if you have a final um, item to say on this matter, Commissioner Tarbutton, I'll allow it now. Um, thank you. 
Um, it's very interesting because I'm looking at here. I raise questions, probing questions, and that it feels like an attack because I'm not agreed. You, I, I think you're a really nice guy. I just don't think you do the whole thing for residents, ED, and the community. And um, I did read some reviews. Excuse me, Madam Chair. May I make a point of I make a point of order in yes. that it is completely inappropriate for Tom to respond as he um, is here and the other bidder is not here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is not so an interview. He can't process. be. He can't. Yeah. He he can't be asked questions. Um, and so I have messaged him and asked him not to respond just so that we're oh. all on the same page. Um, and I do I'm have sure to be, do I'm sure that, um, really, is that necessary, Commissioner Tarbutton? What did I say? I'm sorry, I thought I muted. You said, I'm sure he'll do it. It's not what, what necessary with the yeah, snipe. Right. And I would have liked to see the other candidate who would have asked her questions. No, Madam I'm going to stop right now. I'm going to Can ask a point. Question? Yes, the, once Go someone ahead. has called the question, um, then we move on to call the question. Yes. So, um, Is that what you would like me to do, Madam Chair? Yes, please. Okay, motion to accept the low bidder for legal services uh -huh. for a term of three years. Uh, Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Cancel is still absent at 7.11 p.m. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Absolutely not. No. Uh, Commissioner Richards. Yes. Yes, Madam Chair, with a vote of four yeas, one absent and one nay. Okay, that motion carries, thank you. So that brings us, I think, to up to new business. And the item that we had was the request at the last meeting for there to be an opportunity for board response to the chairperson's remarks, which was a, a dialogue I had uh, presented at the previous meeting. So in the parameters around this for, because this is not a typical item of business, not asking the board to do anything, take any action, I'm going to allow for board responses to the tune of one at a time to three to five minutes, take what time you need. And I guess I'll open the floor to anyone who would like to begin. Point of information, could you re repeat that? What, what, what are we talking about now? Uh, it's a little confusing. You have a bit I'm of sorry, but at the last meeting, yes, it was it was moved and sec moved by Commissioner Cancel and seconded by yourself. Yes, to allow for members of the board to respond to the remarks I made at the beginning of the meeting. And he's so not here. Oh, I table that we don't deal with this until he's here. Why don't we talk about what he presented and he's not here? I'm sorry, is that a motion? Yes. Can you restate the motion? Well, I just said I wish that we would uh, table this discussion. It's very vital until when uh, to our, our next meeting so we can discuss it. So is that, I think that you meant to say, I move that, you don't wish that. You you Is that your motion? You're such a good institutionalist when it comes to Robert's Rules of Order. I move that we table this issue to the following month so that Commissioner Consell can speak to this himself. He asked for it. I second. It's a very important thing, and I'd like to have it tabled. Well, we're waiting for a second. Okay, hearing none, that motion fails. So if there are people who would like to- I, I, I'm opinion. signing off. I'm not gonna participate in this. So I'm gonna sign off when uh, you can text me, um, uh, Jack, if you're still doing it when this is, cause I think this is really, it's just not fair to him. So go ahead. I know people aren't gonna follow me. They're scared of me. I'm an angry black woman. <laughs> But I'll let you go ahead and talk about it because y'all gonna vote whether I my input or not. So, and I guess everybody knows here. So, okay. Um, are there any other members that would like to offer board response at this time? Yeah, Commissioner Richards. 
Uh, yes. Well, first of all, um, I do want to say I'm sorry that uh, Commissioner. I, hold on one second. We're hearing from Attorney I'm, Connor. I'm not sure we have a quorum anymore, Madam Chair. Oh, oh I am so sorry. <laughs> yes, you have four members right now. Yeah. The quorum. So, um, we really... four, is a, four is a quorum according to your bylaws. Okay. All right. I'm miscounting here. Yeah. Sorry about that. Well, thank you for that keen eye. That would, okay. that would not be great. Okay, I'm sorry then, Commissioner Richards. Yeah, I know. I was just going to point out that this uh, comments are for the record and it's not a back and forth or questions. It's just us commenting on uh, your response to his questions. So I will continue if you will. Uh, I want to thank Chairperson Carney for bringing these issues to our attention. I have listened to her responses to your query and applaud her for spending time answering your questions, referring to the law, the regulation, our bylaws, and the committee protocol. I am satisfied with the answers that she has provided to you. My remarks will center around my sadness to see these questions and how they were presented in such an accusatory way. Sad because we are all here for the same reason, but clearly we are not on the same page. I'm tired of hearing about rigged appointments, fixed elections, and how being new and or a person of color has been ignored. In you're not being appointed to the ad hoc committees and hearing uh, uh, constant criticism of our executive director. I have heard the words rigged, fixed, shut off, shut down many times at this table, and frankly, I'm tired of it. Your recent dissatisfaction centers around how you were not given a chance to take part in a meaningful way. Please let me share examples that were afforded to you, but dismissed. As a part of our bo ongoing board uh, to the commission on boarding, uh, Executive Director Leeper and I met with you to discuss issues that might be helpful to you as a commissioner. One of those issues involved discussing conflict of interest and relationship with residents, either when initiated by the resident or by you. You clearly stated that you had no intention of separating or limiting yourself from residents, especially at Hamster Heights, where you had previously been involved. And that set up a beautiful, uh, stage for a conflict of interest in my mind. When you were first appointed to the board, I expressed my enthusiasm that there was an appointment from the housing partnership. I contacted you requesting that you report at NHA board meetings on issues and projects that were happening at the partnership level. You stated that you were not, you did not want to do this. Um, in fact, I cannot remember you talking at any meetings about the par partnership and how we could work better together. Regarding the election of officers, I knew you wanted to become more involved as a commissioner. I thought working with Chairperson Carney in the NHA board leadership role would be a wonderful opportunity for you to learn from her about the difficult job of leading the commission. I called you to see if you would accept the nomination of vice chair as you had complained uh, uh, about Commissioner Brooks holding numerous positions. You said thank you and that yes, we, you would accept the nomination. When we got to the elections, however, you nominated someone else. After complaining about lack of advancement, I was baffled. You were voted in as chair despite your nomination of someone else. Recently, when Chairperson Carney was absent for medical reasons, as vice chair, you were to lead the meeting. It was reported that you said that you would be returning from Florida and that you would call in remotely. We waited, but you did not call or text. I ask that in the future, please do not use derogatory statements and accusations that have been unsubstantiated and please, let us all find a way on behalf of our residents to work together. Respectfully, uh, Marilyn Richards, and I would like this included in the record. 
Thank you. And I, I will email my comments to Commissioner Cancel. So. And um, Commissioner Jones. Sure. Um, I've got a prepared statement. I'll just I'll just read it off. Um, um, I wish to comment on the remarks by the chair during the June board meeting concerning questions and allegations made by Commissioner Cancel. In short, they seem to have been made with little to no background or context. I base my remarks on having read, uh, written down uh, the exchange between the chair and the commissioner, um, read off by the commissioner, or read off by the chair rather. In general, I do not support the change of responsibilities just for the sake of change. In an ideal wor world, this might work, but we do not exist in such a world. When I joined the board, I was a regular commissioner and over time was appointed to several subcommittees. I was a single parent and brought my daughter to meetings in part for freeze pops supplied by the executive director at the time. More to the point, being a board member is like learning a language. One does not hit the ground running from the outset. In time, I learned the language serving on the personnel subcommittee, being vice chair and then chair. When the board felt there was a need for change, I did not object to the process and feel proud to serve wherever the chair sees fit. That's in the bylaws. Another part of this process is seniority. Seniority is a crucial element in any union contract. And I'll remind everybody that I am the so-called designated labor representative to this board. Um, not only does it recognize experience, it acknowledges expertise. I am a union representative and president of my union. I have almost 40 years of service in one capacity or another to UFCW Local 1459 and the labor movement as a whole. I am more than qualified to sit on a personnel subcommittee if appointed by the chair. I take my responsibility serious as a community preservation committee member, and we deal with affordable housing at every session. The notion that change should happen for the sake of change is quite frankly laughable. If it's not broke, don't fix it. In his questions to the chair, Mr. Cancel assumed that I was appointed simply by being a labor union representative and claimed to also be a representative, implying that he also should have been considered. To date, I have not been able to confirm that Mr. Cancel is a labor union representative. I have reached out to actual representatives of the union that he claims to be a representative of. To be clear, there is a difference between being a staff representative of a particular union and a member in good standing of that same union. I, for example, hold an elected position that had been on staff of my local for over 12 years in various capacities. Before that, I was a shop steward for 21 years and served on several bargaining committees. Mr. Cancel appears to be a member in good standing, and I congratulate him on this, but it is not the same as being a staff representative of a particular union. This is misrepresentation in my eyes. In addition, one does not have to be, contrary to Mr. Cancel's assertions, a labor representative to serve on the Community Preservation Committee. It has nothing to do with it. But it doesn't stop there. Regarding the comments that were also made regarding Dr. Bossy, the third person on the grievance committee, I support the chair's statement that we are lucky to have her. Why? Because she came before the Community Preservation Committee with a housing proposal in a recent session that was an example of thinking outside the box. And she won the CPC over through her demonstrated commitment to affordable housing. Indeed, we are fortunate to have her in our community. 
to suggest that Dr. Bossi should be replaced for the sake of change demonstrates a lack of attention to the mission of the Northampton Housing Authority. Concerning the grievance committee, which I do not serve on, there needs to be an understanding of conflict of interest. The chair has outlined this clearly in writing. The Northampton Housing Authority cannot have members of a subcommittee who have been compromised before a grievance is, is even heard. Board members <laughs> recusing themselves is a normal process. What is the public perception of a board member voting to approve a legal counsel after being in litiga litigation against the said counsel? In sum, I've worked hard to ensure the mission of the Northampton Housing Authority continues to be attained. <clears throat> it was disconcerting and disappointing to read these backhanded attacks questioning my role as a commissioner. None of them were ever said to me in person. This is cowardly. There's nothing wrong with disagreement within a representative body. In my board history, we had an appointee from the then Republican governor who did not agree with some of the things that we did. The discussions were healthy to the process. We all shared a common goal. We did not disagree to the point of character assassination. This board needs to return to the mission statement for which we are appointed to strive. Finally, I would just include two recent articles in the Boston Globe. <clears throat> Those of you who read the Globe in the last week would note that there were a couple of columns written about the recent dysfunction on the Boston City Council. <clears throat> um, it's a real train wreck. But unfortunately, it reminds me of what's currently going on in Northampton Housing Authority meetings. And I'm unfortunately, I think we heard some more of it tonight. But there's one, one quote of the article that I'm very much afraid of as far as public service. And in one of them, they quote um, an outgoing city councilor as saying, people all over the city tell him they tune into council meetings, not to watch the substance, he said, they're tuning in to watch the antics and the disgraceful behavior, quote unquote. Without a doubt, the last Northampton Housing Authority meeting in June, in my mind, was a total embarrassment. And I apologize to anyone and the members of the public um, that that happened because it took me a long time to try and watch the video. <clears throat> of that meeting, I, I couldn't do it. And I also, following Commissioner Richards, um, want my remarks introduced into the record and I have um, emailed the executive director a copy of my remarks and also um, a copy of the two articles that I cited at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Um, are there any other Responses, comments. Commissioner Brooks. The Brooks is muted. Ah, uh, you're muted. You're muted, Commissioner Brooks. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, I made my comments clear about Mr. Cancel's, Cancel's accusations of, against my totalitarian takeover of all the uh, committees and appointments, uh, you know, what he says most of the time is off the wall and ludicrous, but I looked at his record uh, as a union um, representative and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't even find that he was a member of that union. Uh, so whatever the man says, He's not here to say it again. Uh, so I'm not going to say anything else until he's here so, so I can answer his questions or his responses or his um, misappropriated uh, comments about all the members on this board uh, and, and, and their positions. 
Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Um, I think that pretty much concludes the remarks. I have no further comments to make except to thank everybody for sticking this through. Um, I wish that um, we did. We had uh, Commissioner Cancel and um, Commissioner Tarbutton here, but um, don't think that this is the end of this conversation, although it is the end of it tonight. I'm hoping that people will respond to some emails that they received regarding scheduling for some upcoming training. And I think if that is it, that there's probably just one final motion if someone would like to offer. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, that's non-debatable. So all those in favor, you can call the roll. But okay, aye. I think it's unanimous. Yeah.